The Turbo Volcanic System is one of the most active on Earth and is located in northern Sumatra of Indonesia. There are 15 eruptions known to have exceeded a magnitude of eight throughout the past two million years. Two of these have been produced by Toba. However, for this study, we look at the most recent of these eruptions. So the one at 74,000 years ago, which is otherwise known as the youngest Toba tuff. The 74K eruption is geologically exceptional. So with a magnitude of 8.8, .8, it's the largest known eruption, both of the Toba system and, the, and throughout the Quaternary. So exceeding the magnitude of any volcanic eruption that's occurred in modern history, the Toba eruption of 74,000 years ago has really captivated public imagination. However, this has often led to sensationalist articles and news claims, some of which I've included on this slide. But what does the science say about the climate impact of this eruption? So in the 1990s, the Toba catastrophe theory suggested that following the eruption, there was widespread cooling um, across the globe, which would have had catastrophic effects on the biosphere and early human populations, mostly due to the sort of size of the eruption and also by proxy, the amount of material injected into the atmosphere. However, since then, this theory is becoming increasingly less supported as archaeological and modeling studies have found evidence that actually the direct radiative effects of the eruption were in fact short-lived, enough for human population to survive nonetheless. But we really wanted to examine the question, what about any long-term feedback-driven effects on the climate system? Stalagmites are frequently used in paleoclimate science. Because they're formed from the water source from the surface, they can provide really key insights into the climate system and also environmental conditions during their formation. So if we have stalagmites, you know, from thousands of years old, they can give us a multi-millennial um, perspective of climate change during this period. And not only that, stalagmites can be dated using uranium series, which allows a precision of approximately 0 to 1 to 1% on dating. And so these stalagmites really are crucial and hugely valuable for study of abrupt climate change. In our study, we use stalagmite from the Eastern Mediterranean. And this is a region where records have shown particular sensitivity to the North Atlantic climate. So arid phase in the Eastern, Eastern Mediterranean generally coincide with colder conditions in the North Atlantic. And so they capture large scale um, perturbations and changes in temperature and precipitation. And so large, cl large scale climate change in the Northern Hemisphere. In this study, we use stalagmite, which is known as DIMI-3. This stalagmite was grown in Dim Cave, which is located roughly six kilometers from the um, Antalya coast in southern Turkey. The stalagmite was collected in June 2012, and anal analyses of the morphology of the stalagmite suggest that um, the growth pattern predominantly reflects water availability in the region. We used laser ablation inductively coupled mass spectrometry, otherwise known as LAICPMS. Um, to gain geochemical measurements, um, particularly trace element composition of this stalagmite. Um, and this was conducted in Germany. The, the stalagmite was also dated using uranium series, which is the most high precision um, dating technique we can use on stalagmites. Um, however, for our study, we use a new age model generated by the Copra algorithm to assign, to basically assign a precise time scale to our measurement transect. We also used PCA, so we did this to examine whether certain trace elements co-varied in the stalagmite at certain points in time. So really get a time result indication of what the distribution and deposition of minerals in the stalagmite was like during the period of growth. This figure shows the select trace element co concentrations measured in our stalagmite and the green, the gray, sorry, not green, the gray shading marks the Greenland stable events and the light gray shading indicates the ending of these events as um, derived from stalagmite evidence from a study published actually this year. From this figure, I firstly want to draw your attention to this section here marked in yellow. And from looking closer, we can identify two key stages of this change. The first stage is from 74Ka to 72.3Ka. First, we see an abrupt increase in zinc and lead. And this occurs at the onset of GS20 and also immediately following Toba. We suggest the primary sources of these trace elements most likely come from 
um, either enhanced bedrock weathering, so the dissolution of the rock forming the cave system, or increased dust deposition, so dust blowing into the cave entrance and being deposited directly onto the stalagmite tip. Um, bedrock dissolution is also a source of magnesium, and we also do see a rise in magnesium at the um, 74Ka um, mark. Magnesium is currently used as a proxy for paleoridity in stalagmites, and is associated with processes such as prior calcite precipitation or incongruent calcite dissolution, which in other words are processes which often occur during periods of aridity and are driven by aridity. So the supersaturation of drip water due to low moisture availability, so low amounts of water flowing through the cast at a given time. So all four of the observations I've just mentioned here um, suggest the onset of cooler ambient temperatures, but also, and most importantly, the onset of drying um, that occurred fairly quickly um, following 74K ABP. The second stage we see between 72.3 and 71.3K ABP, um, where we see a sporadic aragonite growth occurring. This process often occurs um, due to the saturation of drip water, often from bedrock dissolution which again can be linked to more arid conditions. And we can see these aragonite layers in the geochemical profile, as well as visually, you know, we see these darker layers. Um, the aragonite more um, preferentially incorporates larger cations into its structure due to crystal differences. And so you can see on this figure to the right, we see a sharp increase in uranium. And this is one of the larger cations, which is preferentially um, incorporated into aragonite. And so based on this evidence, we can suggest that southern Turkey experienced particularly arid conditions following 74Ka. However, two observations also suggest that the mag magnitude and duration of these changes was actually quite exceptional. So firstly, zinc, magnesium and lead do not occur in such high concentrations at any other point in our geochemical record. Um, but secondly, the aragonite transitions, which we propose are driven by aridity, also don't occur at any other point in the record. And this, following these observations, we therefore suggest that there's an additional forcing mechanism, which may have contributed to the fact that this stadial event was so anomalous. Um, and due to the timing of the variability, Toba does appear as a very strong candidate for this, for the initial forcing. So this is a figure showing a comparison between the um, geochemical records from across the northern hemisphere. So in Delta 80 no, in both Yanku Cave from China and also Secret Cave from Borneo, we see a dramatic reduction in um, the isotope value um, or an increase in Delta 80 no, sorry. Um, and both of these changes um, are cited as the most anomalous changes in these records respectively. Um, so suggesting that GS20 is unusual in not only the Eastern Mediterranean, but also in China and also in Borneo as well. And we also see changes in Delta 13C records. So in the record from Robinson Cave in New Mexico, we see a dramatic um, increase in Delta 13C, which to suggests that aridity was occurring. So a reduction in bioproductivity. The interval in which our stalagmite record grew is characterized by a highly variable climate where the climate oscillated between stadial and stadial conditions. Um, the relative timing of these intervals actually is going to be different compared to uh, geographically, so between different stalagmite records. This generates complexity and add that to complexity associated with um, the uncertainties in our stalagmite dating and the uncertainties in the eru October eruption date means it's really hard to define whether GS20 started before or after Toba. Also much left for us to learn about how other climate factors such as um, baseline conditions and ice sheet extent and atmospheric CO2 and all these things could have affected not only the sensitivity of the climate system to volcanism, but also how these could have affected um, the geochemistry of stalagmites growing in this period. But to conclude, the question of whether high magnitude volcanism can cause millennial scale climate change is contested um, and our record cannot provide unequivocal evidence that Toba caused GS20 However, what it does do is provide us with evidence that drying ensued pretty soon following 74 KABP, and this drying lasted for thousands of years. On our stalagmite mean age model, the onset of this change occurs approximately 200 years following the Toba eruption date, 
And this change is comparable to other anomalies seen in records, which would suggest that GS20 was particularly exceptional. So taken together, stalagmites could provide evidence for climate perturbation persisting for thousands of years following um, high magnitude volcanic eruptions. And our evidence agrees with prior suggestions that actually Toba did affect um, the onset and pacing of the transition into GS20. Um, however, further work is needed to constrain the role of volcanic forcing um, on abrupt climate, climate transitions in the Northern Hemisphere.